Welcome to Wrestling Talk in the Shop, where we cover all things professional wrestling, from new wrestling to classic wrestling and everything in between. We go to wrestling, we do some wrestling, and everything in the ring. Join us now for Wrestling Talk in the Shop. Hey guys, uh, it's Jonathan from Wrestling Talk in the Shop. Welcome back, and today we're going to go over... Uh, Celebrity Wrestling Magazine from November of 1987. I was two months old in this magazine. I never heard of Celebrity Wrestling Magazine. It has a nice shot of Hulk Hogan and he, and he was going bald in. <laughs> you can see that there. And uh, young Rowdy Piper on the cover. And on the back you got uh, Larry Sharp and David San Martino. Uh, the son of Bruno San Martino, he tried to make, he didn't quite make, you know, that's hard when your father's Bruno San Martino and you're trying to fill his suit, fill his shoes. But uh, this magazine was sold for $2.50 back in the day. And anyway, come with me and we're going to look through it. Alright guys, there's a nice shot of the cover and we'll turn the page. There's Alpha, the Samoan there. I believe that's either Roman Reigns' Dad or his uncle, one of those is his uh, dad. I'm not sure which one is uh, Roman Reigns' uh, father, but I don't know if it's Alpha or Sika, but he's either his father or his uncle. And then there's the celebrity wrestling content. You got no holds bars, celebrity ratings, training like the Hulkster, celebrity wrestlers in focus, time capsule, the Anderson brothers, wrestler on the rise. Roddy Piper, Roddy Piper's comeback plan. Ken Patera's bad boy makes good. The British Bulldogs against the odds. Uh, Shaska Watley ripped off. Wrestling's most celebrity celebrated stars. Celebrities of Phantom. Women wrestlers. Women wrestlers of the 80s. Misty Blue challenges all. Grappler of the month. Let's see. And the publisher is Michael Morse and Barry O'Hara. I've never heard of those people, and I've I've looked at a lot of wrestling magazines, but like I said, there's a young Nikita Koloff, the Russian Bear, and uh, and then here's No Holds Bar, uh, Michael O'Hara, sandwich between the De Deadly Scorpions. I don't know how how many issues this, how long this magazine was around. Now this was how I kept up with wrestling as a kid because we were poor and I didn't have a lot of cable, and I could always go to the grocery store and see who the uh, who the world champion was. And of course, the WWF champion was uh, Hulk Hogan, and number one was uh, Butch Reed. <laughs> number two, Ron Bass. Number three, Harley Race. Number four, Killer Khan. Number five, Don Morocco. Number six, King Kong Brody. Number seven, the Honky Tonk Man. Number eight, Randy Savage. I would think he would be higher up. Adrian Adonis was number nine, and Hercules Hernandez was number 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 ten. What is, oh, is this the what what rating was that? Because here's another WWF. That's the Intercontinental. That's for the championship. Well, it's not those the, the heavyweight. They didn't break it up into, anyway. Anyway, and number two, I don't know what this was, was <laughs> here's another list. The WWF Intercontinental and it's Ricky Steamboat was champion. Number one was Randy Savage. Number two was Harley Race. Number three was Butch Reed. He was number one on the other list, but number four was Honky Tonk Man. Is this like different weeks or something? Anyway, number five was Adrian Adonis. Number six was Don Morocco. Number seven was Bob Orton. Number eight was uh, Hercule Hernandez. Number nine, Killer Khan. Number 10, Ron Bass. Oh, right here it says our rating system is based on the promoter's determination of recognized ranked contenders. For example, good guys are not listed as contenders for the WWF title as the promoters refuse to match scientific grapplers against one another. Uh, I mean, world title contests, our ratings are therefore the most accurate system for measuring contention within the sport. Okay. Anyway, and then you got the NWA here. Ric Flair, the champion. Uh, number one, Barry Windham. Number two, Nikita Koloff. Number three, Dusty Rose. 
Number four, Ron Garvin. Number five, Brad Armstrong. Number six, Robert Gibson. Number seven, Rick, Ricky Morton. Number eight, Ron Fuller. Uh, nine and ten was Road Warriors, Animal and Hawk. And uh, we'll, we're not going to read them all. I'll just tell you what I'll read. I'll read the tops of uh, and then number the NWA over here was uh, in uh, United States champion was Nikita Koloff. Hell, I might as well read them all. <laughs> Lex Luger, Vladimir. I don't know who that guy is, but uh, he was number two. And then number three was Ivan uh, Nikolov. Number four was Dick Murdoch. Number five was Tully Blanchard. Number six was Shaska Wiley. Number seven, Arn Anderson. Number eight, Bobby Eaton. Nine, Stan Lane. And number 10, Bubba Rogers. Then you go to the UWF. And uh, it was uh, One Man Gang was the champion. Number, number uh, one was Ted DiBiase. Number two was Chris Adams. Number three, Terry Taylor. Number four, Iceman King Parsons. Number five, Sam Houston. Number six, Missing Link. Number seven, Savannah Jack. Eight, Steve Williams, Dr. Death. Number nine, Chavo Guerrero. That's senior for you young folks. Number 10, Rick Steiner. Then you go to world class, and the champion was Kevin Von Erich. Number one was Nord the Barbarian. Number two was Doink the Clown. <laughs> Not really Matt Bourne, but that's who... Number three was Black Black Bart. Number four was Adula the Butcher. Number five, Brian Adidas. Uh, number six is, uh, what's that first name? Alberto, Alberto Madril. Madril. Number seven, Jeep Swanson. Number eight was uh, Eric Embry. And number nine, Jack Vitry, which was uh, Cactus Jack. And number 10 was uh, Bob the Cat Bradley. And I... I don't know what this is over here. This is the Men International. Number one was Tatsu Funkanami. Number two was Owen Hart. Number three was Ric Flair. Number four was, uh, I can't read that name. Rick, Ricky. Ricky Tristley. Yeah. Number five, Ricky Steamboat, who we just seen on Collision Saturday night. <laughs> Number six was uh, Nick Bunkwinkle. Number seven was Kevin Von Erich. Number eight was uh, Hulk Hogan. Nine, Mark Rocco. And number 10 was Billy Sampson. And then you go over here to the CWA and you got uh, the champion is Austin Idol. Number one was uh, Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, number two is Big Bubba. Number three, Jeff Jarrett. Number four is uh, Tarzan Goto. Number five was Goliath. Number six was the Hunter. Number number seven was Soul Train Jones. Number eight was Bam Bam Bigelow. And number nine was Alan West. And number ten was Bob Tony. Then you got the AWA. The champion was Nick Bunkwinkle. Number one was Kurt Hang Kurt Henning. I almost said Kurt Hang uh, Kurt Angle. <laughs> uh, number two was Larry Sabisco. Number three Colonel DeBreeze. Number four the Super Ninja. Number five, Playboy Buddy Rose. And number six, the magnificent Kevin Kelly. Huh, he's still an announcer. <laughs> Not really. But uh, then you got number seven was uh, Boris Zukov. Number eight was uh, the Blaster. And number nine is the Sheik L. Casey. And then number ten was Doug Somers. And I guess that's... Is that it? Is that it? For the women. Yeah, we'll go over the women. We won't. We won't uh, disown the women. Women International. Number one is uh, Misty Blue. Number two is Sherry Martell. Number three is Wendy Richter. Number four is Velvet McIntyre. Number five is Crush D Gal. Uh, Gallo. The Gallo. Something else. And uh, another crush is number six Gallo. It looks like Oscar. <laughs> Number seven is Devil Masumi. Number uh, eight is Linda Davis. Number nine is Debbie Combs. And number 10 is the Fabulous Moolah. All right, guys, we went over that. Then we'll see what they got for sale over here. What do we got over here? The Johnson Smith Company. Except for 88 cents. What is 88 cents? What can you get for? Uh, 
What is that, a water gun? Oh, it's a pellet pistol. Huh. And you got your main man. Yeah, training like the Hulkster. He looked, he was a good looking guy there. It was a young Hulkster. He, this was young. This was, he was. Six. Nah, read it. Read this right here. If Hulk didn't have an obsession with living life to the fullest, he never would have been able to surpass the likes of Kamala. Yep. You gunned and giant really was trying to set him back. Here we go. This is Hulk Hogan in Japan here. They make a, uh, there is a Hulk Hogan poppy figure of this. I'd love to have that figure. It's only $1,300 though. <laughs> Either, if you can find one, you know. But. There's more Hulkster there. After every match, the champ, what's that? I can't read it for him. The champ takes time to thank the man above. Yeah. And then you got the wrestling home shop, shopping marketplace. Here we got, well, we got Hulk Hogan and fans accept no invitation since 1979. We are the original authorized and only fan club endorsed by the Hulkster himself. Yearly dues are $9.95 for exclusive photo, photo list, profile sheet, membership, cards galore. What do you get? And then you got combat sports t-shirts, $9.99. Hmm. We got Rick Martell. He was really good in the AWA. He didn't quite pan out in the WWF like, like I thought he would have anyway. And uh, what's his celeb? You want to read his celeb starts, Lindsay? His celeb stats. Celeb Rick stats. Martel, Excuse me. Hometown, Quebec City, Canada. Or Montreal, Canada. Birthday, March 18th, 1955. Height, 6'2". Weight, 235 pounds. Uh, brown hair, brown eyes. Favorite food, seafood. Mom's home cooking. Marital status, he's married. Favorite colors are blue and white. AWA World Heavyweight Champion, WWF Tag Champion with Tony um, Gurea, uh, Australian Champion, Australian Tag Champion with Mark Lewin, Georgia Tag Team Champion with Tommy Rich, Hawaiian Champion, Northwest Tag Champion with Roddy Piper, Canadian Champion. Parents' names Evelyn and Daniel, and professional debut was June 7, 1972 in New Glasgow's Nova Scotia, Canada. When he took on the model gimmick, he really took off. You know, that was, he was, I guess he was a better heel than. Here, and what we got over here, we got, what are we advertising over here? Camera? Radar detector. Radar detector. <laughs> yeah, $29.95. And you got more shots of the Rick Martell over here. Even King Kong Bundy proves to be no obstacle for the determined French Canadian superstar. And then you get down here, you got the abdominal stretch has Haku Tonga near defeat. I doubt it. <laughs> and then you got Rick Martel, the leg scissors on Pedro Morales, Moral, or whatever, however. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering his name, but oh, you, Morales. yeah. Then you got him down here with Bret Hart whips Rick into the ropes. Huh, I still see these around. <laughs> Then you say people with, that work at desks use those? Yeah, they're kind of brown bags. They yeah. work for home. They use them for old folks too. Yeah. And you got Ole, Ole Anderson explains his, what is that? His, uh. Intricate, intri the intricate, I can't say it. Intricacies <laughs> of the steel cage match to Gordon Sully. Yeah, with Gordon Sully. He's just telling him about the cage, mm. sounds like. There's one legend there. And ain't old Anderson. <laughs> There's Arn Anderson. He's still around today. You can see him. Well, not. I didn't see him in a long time. Yeah. But he was pretty good. He was probably about 40 here. He looked like he was about 60. <laughs> Over here we got what? Bob Griffin proves no match for Ole in their test of strength. Ole Anderson in their test of strength. 
a rare photo of the brothers Anderson Jean left in Laura's center in Old Right. Uh, Laura's Anderson, he was the one that he was his uh, he was featured in the Young Rock is uh, the Booker anyway Booker and some of the show you can see they talk about Lars Anderson and the, oh, nice. Lars Anderson in the Young Rock if you I don't know if you keep up with that or not but then here's the wrestler on the rise Larry Anson Read his uh, stab stats there. His lib stats. Yeah. Larry Anson, birthday November 13th, 1953, from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Height six foot four, 270 pounds, blue eyes, blonde hair, 42 inch waist, 18 and a half inch bicep, chest 55, neck 19. Favorite colors are black and gold. Favorite sport is weightlifting, bowling, and wrestling, obviously. Favorite hobbies are stamp and coin collecting. Huh. Favorite food is steak, hamburgers, pastry, pancakes, and pierogies. And his favorite music is rock and roll. Stamp collecting. <laughs> That's a lost... Uh, yeah, lost ark anymore. Yeah. And then over here you got a nice picture of uh, winning at all costs. Larry Anson is motto. And there's another shot of Larry. And a really <laughs> high bow tie. Or is that, that might be Lars Anderson. Lars Anderson. That's Lars. Yeah. And over here, I, what, are we, what are we selling here? Are these, uh, are, are these BB guns? Or? Huh. I guess you can get a real gun. It says no federal license or gun permit needed. I don't know. Anyway. That's probably like a pellet pistol or something. There's a Rowdy Piper's comeback plan. Young Rowdy. Yeah. More shots of Rowdy Piper. <clears throat> now we're getting to some color. What we got over here? More, uh, more uh, Hall of Fame rings? <laughs> The WWE Hall of Fame rings and this nice color photo of Tito Santana versus Paul Orndorff. Uh, and you got the Sarge, Sergeant Slaughter and Cowboy Lang. I think Cowboy Lang was a midget. I'm not 100% but I think he was. Uh, I don't know who that is. Uh, Ken Patera, that's who it is. Uh, Bad boy makes good. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Ken Patera and uh, Sal uh, Bull. And then you got down here, you got uh, Bruno San Martino. And Ken Patera, I guess Bruno San Martino was retired at this point and acting as a, acting as a uh, announcer. And this, uh, Patera leaps onto a dazed Pat Patterson down here. Then over here you got more shots of Ken Patera. You can get some genuine leather shoes for uh, 1998 over here. I find these advertisements almost as interesting. By the year 2000, two out of three Americans could be illiterate. <laughs> here we are in 20, what, what, what are we in 23. And you notice how I'm reading these magazines. Butchering these guys' names. I might guess, not be wrong. Yeah. Uh, I can get these pages. Uh, the British Bulldogs. They were a great tag team. They were. Uh, they were a very good tag team. Dynamite Kid. He was really ahead of his time. I mean, he was something. Not, uh, he didn't have the greatest, uh, he wasn't the greatest person around, but he was a hell of a wrestler. British, there's Davy Boy Smith there. And I don't, I'm not sure who this guy is over here. Shaska. Shaska. Ripped off. Some of these, was before my time, there's more shots of this. And then you got... What this right here is what put Hulk Hogan on the map, Rocky Three. Hulk Hogan and Sylvester Stallone discuss their uh, 
seen in Rocky Three. I remember as a kid, I thought Hulk Hogan was as big as Andre the Giant. That's the way they made him look in uh, WrestleMania and Rocky Three. And you got Terry Funk. Hey, what was that? What was this in uh, Paradise Alley? Is that what that? Yeah, that's from Paradise mm -hmm. Alley. I think that was when. Uh, Sylvester Stallone was like arm wrestling to get his son you back. Don't forget the classic arm wrestling match between Terry Funk and Lee Canalito in Paradise Alley. That's a pretty good movie. And over here you got Ox Baker, the master of the heart punch. And you got Gene LaBelle. He's uh, one of the trainers of Daniel Bryan. And you got Tonga Kid. Tonga Kid will be seen in the upcoming film of The Body Slam over here. That was a corny wrestling movie. About a, it, was, it was kind of the time around the time rock and wrestling was. The WWE was doing the rock and wrestling and they kind of made it like rock. The guy was a rock and, rock and roll prom music producer and he, he was going broke or something. So he got into the rec wrestling business and he ended up promoting wrestling and. Uh, and Tonga Kid and Rowdy Piper was in it, and there was some other stars in it. And over here you got Hard Hardboard Haggerty and Big John Stud in there, I guess. You know he went he would he become a movie star in the late '80s and left wrestling. Another advertisement for wrestling videos. If your pick 1995. Boy, that's expensive for 1987. Another shot of Hulk Hogan, celebrities of Phantom. Oh, they're they're advertising you can get Hulk Hogan's fan club again. They were really pushing that. Who is this? The Honky Tonk Man, the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion until today. In the morning, uh, Gunther is going to beat that record. And over here, you got the Bulldog Bauer Fan Club, P.O. Box, New Jersey, six dollars. He's significantly cheaper than Hulk Hogan. Here we go, something that really wouldn't take off. The Judy uh, Sterling uh, women's wrestling. That's sort of sort of raunchy for the 80s, wasn't it? Risque. Risque, yeah, that's the word I was looking for, risque. And you got women's wrestling of the 80s. Oh, women's wrestler, yeah, women's wrestlers of the 80s. Only women's wrestlers I could think of is like uh, Wendy Richter and Fabulous Mula. Who is this? Misty Blue, she must have been pretty big back in, I don't know where she was the champion at. And you got Linda Dallas feels the wrath of the ladies champion. Sherry Martell, she was big, I remember. Mm -hmm. More shots of Misty Blue over here. And you can subscribe to the celebrity wrestler. And you subscribe, you get uh, six issues, only fifteen dollars. Nine issues for twenty-one dollars. Add six per year for a year. Canada and Foreign Wrestling Power is published nine times a year. And I remember seeing this girl, uh, Mad Dog Debbie Irons, on some of the early wrestling stuff. Women's wrestling just didn't really take off for a long time. Well, yeah, Glow, it was pretty big, but you got Linda Dallas. She looks like she's something. And on the back, you got David, David San Martino versus Larry Sharp. Larry Sharp, he was the uh, trainer at the Monster Factory. He, cha he trained uh, Bam Bam Bigelow and a lot, of, a lot of big names back in the day. Bam Bam Bigelow is the only one I could think of at the moment. But... Anyway, guys, we thank you for, if you made it to the end, we uh, hope you enjoyed this, and like and subscribe, hit that.